Hello and welcome to another video. This one is about a football club called Newton Heath LYR. LYR Football Club. Yeah, Newton Heath LYR. They're one of the biggest teams in the world, apparently. Um, oh, wait, hang on. Looks like they changed their name about a century ago to Manchester United. And there, look, is Old Trafford. You can see it there, dominating the skyline here in and around the houses of Manchester. Yes, before they became Manchester United, a local team of railway workers was put together. The official name of the club was Newton Heath Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Football Club. Ooh, bit of a mouthful. But yeah, Manchester United, a team who have won European Cups, Champions Leagues, Premier Leagues. They've had, obviously, Sir Matt Busby, Sir Alex Ferguson, Cristiano Ronaldo, Wayne Rooney. Yes, that team, that huge team that you all know, started out as a railway team back in the 1800s, a team for railway workers back when football was still in its early stages. How do a team of local railway workers playing other local sides who are also made up of workmen, railwaymen and all that kind of stuff, go from that to become European and English champions? Well, we'll be getting into that in this video. This isn't the last time I'll come here as well as, as, well as like other clubs. Um, look at this, the little blossom trees are out. Look at that. Spring is certainly here. But yeah, this won't be the last time that I'm here. The same with all the other clubs. I'm going to come back uh, more and more when stadium tours reopen, when you can go to games and stuff like that. But um, yeah, if I do miss anything out about the Man U story, do let me know and I'll try and cover it next time. Please remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. I'm doing another giveaway in this video. So I've done giveaways in Everton and Man City so far, and this will be another giveaway. So yeah, stick around to find out how you can win um, some Man United stuff that I'm gonna buy in the club shop as well as some stuff that I've been given as well by Foco the legends at Foco um, yeah that is all information on that is coming up a little bit later on please also do remember to share the vlog pass the vlog we're calling it Crouchy does pass the pod you've got to pass the vlog go on just pick a team that I've been to that one of your mates supports and pass it on to them stick it on your Facebook stick it on your Twitter whatever tag me in it I'm on Twitter Facebook Instagram just give this vlog a share and I'd really really appreciate it anyway it's about time I stopped rambling and uh, we had a look around Old Trafford. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, this club was formed as Newton Heath LYRFC. The LYR standing for Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway Men, I think. And um, yeah, they played in regional leagues for their like earliest history. Within 10 years of their formation, they had joined a regional league called The Combination, which included teams like Wrexham, Crewe and Tranmere. That league, The Combination, dissolved after just a year and Newton Heath joined the Football Alliance. The Football Alliance was set up to be a rival to the Football League and eventually the Football Alliance would get swallowed up by the Football League as well and become the second division basically. In the 1892-93 season, Newton Heath competed in the Football League top division for the first ever time. Newton Heath LYR became independent from the railway company around this time and dropped the LYR from its name just to become Newton Heath Football Club. A few years of top tier football came to an end as the club got relegated shortly after to tier two. Shortly after this relegation in 1902, the club had huge debts of around two and a half thousand pounds, which is around 300K in today's money. The club were in absolute dire straits. They were on the verge of being wound up until club captain Harry Stafford approached some businessmen in order to get some help to uh, yeah rebuild the club. One of the main businessmen was, wait for it, he was called John Henry Davis. Amazing to think that his name is John Henry Davis, obviously he's got Davis, but yeah, over at Liverpool at the moment is obviously the owner, John Henry. It was around that time that that very man, John Henry Davis, changed the club's name from Newton Heath to Manchester United to, um to appeal to a wider audience, they weren't just Newton Heath anymore and uh, yeah, Man City had just changed their name to Manchester City and inspired by them, he wanted to change the Manchester name or the Newton Heath name to something Manchester related to appeal to a wider audience. Manchester Celtic was thought up, Manchester Central was thought up until they finally decided on Manchester United. Right, and do you want to win the stuff that I have just bought in the club shop? Well, great, because me and Foco, the sponsor of this video, have teamed up. Now, firstly, I'll tell you about Foco. Go to the first link in the description box below and search their website if you're a Man United fan I guarantee that they have like hundreds of products on there that you would want as a Man United fan from shirts and shorts to uh, yeah other spring summer items and even toys where you can build Old Trafford you can build you can build balls with Manchester United's logo on they've got so much stuff on there a huge range of officially licensed products so they work with the clubs they're officially licensed stuff so yeah you know it's the best kind of stuff that you can buy um, but yeah they are the first link in the description box below they have also given me a pack of three masks to 
to give away, as well as the stuff that I've just bought in the club shop, which you've just seen on the screen. All you need to do to win all this stuff is go to the pinned comment, which is below in the comment section, of course, and that is a, uh, a link to the Instagram post, which is on screen just now. All you've got to do is like that post, follow me, follow Foco, and tag one friend in that post. I've done it for Everton, I've done it for City. Now's the time of United. So yeah, get in that comment section on Insta. Make sure you enter, follow me and follow them. Thank you very much. Yeah, huge thank you to Foco. Do remember to check them out. First link in the description box below. They've got so much good stuff on there. Post-World War II in 1945, Manu's fortunes were changed forever with the appointment of Sir Matt Busby as manager. Not yet a sir, of course, when he joined, but he would later on, he would become a sir, of course, for what he did here at the club. Yeah, the former Liverpool and Manchester City player who would later go on to become a sir for his achievements here at United. Busby demanded full control when he joined uh, of team selection, transfers and training and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it was his way or the highway. He guided the club to high finishes in the league and even won the FA Cup in 19. 48. This was the first piece of major silverware for 37 years for the club and in 1952 they won the first division, that was their first league in 41 years. With an average age of just 22, the back-to-back -back double winning side of 56 and 57 earned the nickname the Busby Babes. He obviously set foundations for United to become a club that produces youngsters and to be fair, even to this day, isn't, don't they hold the record for the most amount of consecutive games with uh, academy products at least in the matchday squad and on the bench? Testament to United for that. They are amazing at uh, bringing through young players. Yeah, they were the first English team under Busby to uh, compete in the European Cup. That was in the 56-57 season. Now, can anyone name me the first British club to have played in the European Cup? I have been there before and I have mentioned it in one of my videos. So yeah, if you do know, drop it in the comments below. But yeah, in that initial season, the first ever season an English team had competed in Europe's biggest competition. They um, they thrashed Belgian champions and like 10 nil, but they would eventually uh, lose to Real Madrid in the semis. And um, yeah, that 10 nil win is apparently a record score for United even to this day. But the following season on the way home from a uh, European Cup quarterfinal victory over Red Star Belgrade, the aircraft they were on had to uh, land in Germany in Munich to uh, refuel. And um, on the 6th of February in 1958, the Munich air disaster took place and uh, yeah, sadly took 23 lives, eight of which were Manchester United players. Several more were injured. Two players were injured so badly they'd never play again. And reserve team manager, Jimmy Murphy, that man there, I believe, took charge of the team while Sir Matt Busby in the middle there. Of course, not yet, sir. Matt Busby was um, yeah in hospital and recovering from his injuries. The club had even made it to the FA Cup final that season. And uh, yeah, they would lose to Bolton, sadly. Their um, kind of mishmash of a side, of course, it would have been so hard to rebuild and such out of such a tragedy. And um, UEFA even did invite them to, uh, to join the next year's European Cup, even though they weren't champions, that was Wolves. But yeah, even though the FA said that they could go and play in it as guests, the Football League decided that they couldn't. They declined Manchester United's entry because they hadn't qualified properly. In the years after the tragedy, this legend here, who even has a statue just uh, at the front of Old Trafford there, uh, Matt Busby, rebuilt the team around survivors such as Bobby Charlton, Harry Gregg and Bill Foulkes. Busby signed Dennis Law in the 60s, and that coincided with the rise of youth products such as George Best. They won the FA Cup in 60 Free, and that was the club's first trophy since uh, that awful day in Munich. They won the league in 65 and 67, which meant they once again qualified for the European Cup. Having been dominated by teams from Spain, Portugal and Italy for its first 11 years, the European Cup was finally won by a British team in 1967. Of course, that was Jock Steen's legendary Lisbon Lions, who brought the trophy back to British shores for the first ever time. A year later, at Wembley Stadium, Matt Busby guided Man United to European glory for the first time. They drew one all in regular time with Benfica, Bobby Charlton putting them ahead before Benfica scored late on to make it one all, but then United scored three goals in a seven minute period in extra time to win the European Cup. Goals from Best, Kidd and Charlton again meant that the European Cup had finally had an English winner, or had had an English winner for the first time rather. What an amazing job from Busby and like the team that he rebuilt to uh, come through that tragedy and a decade later win the trophy that they had almost died to get their hands on. Look at this. 
Let's look, the canal runs by Old Trafford. Look, as you can see down there. And um, since there's quite a few security guards um, kind of outside of Old Trafford, um, who are a little bit weird about filming, I'm uh, gonna keep telling you about the Man, Man United story as I come along here, the uh, canal, but I will include like images and shots and stuff that I've just taken while it's not like vlogging like this. But yeah, it was around the 60s that um, the Holy Trinity were dubbed and uh, yeah, United had Charlton, Best and Law like absolutely smashing it for the club. Look at them. Little Man United Ducks. These 60s were a hugely successful period for the club, winning leagues and cups, um, yeah, whilst the uh, Holy Trinity were here. And um, Old Trafford even went through some government paid renovations in order to host matches for the 1966 World Cup, which England would of, of course go on to win. And uh, the England team even had two Man United players in the starting 11 for the final against Germany. Bobby Charlton and Nobby Styles even had an extra, um, extra player in the squad who didn't make the final, but um, yeah, pretty amazing think that uh, United did so well out of the World Cup in that you know certain of their a few of their players play for England and uh, their ground even got much needed renovations paid for them by the government I've even seen the uh, World Cup trophy before whilst in Manchester at the Football Museum and uh, yeah I'm not even sure if I'm able to get across this bridge today to see the Sir Alex Ferguson stand they keep it um yeah, they keep it quite blocked off Old Trafford, unfortunately. But yeah, 1968, they won the European Cup. But by 1974, Man United were relegated. Busby left, came back for a short spell. But um, Law, Best and Charlton had all left the club as well. And yeah, six years after being European champions, they were relegated to the second tier. The 70s and 80s were okay for the club. They won a couple of uh, cups, but they certainly didn't hit the heights that they'd hit in the decade or two before. It would take from 1967 to 1993 for them to win another league title. Yeah, that was a 26 year span without a league title, whilst uh, yeah, European and English football was being dominated by Forest and by Liverpool. But Man United brought in a man who they hoped would steer them in a different direction. And while I'm trying to get in to have a look at the uh, Sir Alex Ferguson stand, which is over there, which is of course uh, the man that Man United brought in to uh, bring the success back to the club. And I was gonna tell you a little bit about him. By his statue, it is completely impenetrable. Everything is locked off except from the bit around the front where like there are security guards already they're already a little bit weird about you filming but yeah it's so inaccessible which is a real shame but um yeah let me tell you about the fergie era you look at his records now and uh, yeah fergie has 13 leagues five fa cups four league cups two champions leagues and a club world cup and numerous other international and european titles some say you know he's a football genius and looking at what he's won a lot would probably agree but he did also sign bebe but in all seriousness united bringing him in from aberdeen in 1986 is probably one of the best moves any football club has ever made um but it didn't all start off too rosy for him it did take a while for him to win a trophy but in his first season i believe he took over when they were 21st and um um, he ended the season with them in 11th so he did turn them around a little bit but it would take some time for him to really take them back to the big time so yeah Man United ended the 1980s with Fergie in charge he'd been there for about three years he was there in 86 so by 89 at the end of the decade they finished the decade off awfully they were just outside the relegation zone and a banner reading three years of excuses and it's still crap Tara Fergie was spotted in Old Trafford famously there were rumors of course that a uh, third round FA Cup tie against Forest could be his last game if they lost however yeah Mark Robbins scored for United in a 1-0 win United would go on to win the cup that season and um, yeah that game is widely regarded as a bit of a turning point for Man United Man U did go on to win the cup that season but um, they had to do it after a replay with Crystal Palace because uh, Ian Wright had the game of his life at Wembley. So uh, yeah, Ian Wright had something to say about it, but eventually United did get the better at Palace. That was Fergie's first trophy at Old Trafford. And yeah, safe to say that after that one, the floodgates opened. The league title was still eluding Fergie and Man United as um, after the, the season after the FA Cup win, they won the Cup Winners' Cup. Hughes bagged a brace against his former team, Barcelona, who Man United, he had left Man United for earlier in his career and he'd come back to United, now playing under Fergie. But um, yeah, he left, of course, United to go to Barca. He came back, then scored twice against Barca in the final, beating them at uh, De Kuyp, Feyenoord Stadium, somewhere I've also been. So yeah, check that 
that video out if you want. Players like Peter Schmeichel, Andre K Ch Kinchelskis, I think I'm saying that right. I'm, you know, I'm not the best with pronunciation. Lee Sharp were coming through. They're either bought or were coming through. And uh, yeah, it was around this time, of course, that the class of 92 was starting to emerge as well. In 91-92, Leeds won the league with United winning the League Cup and Super Cup, both for the first time. The 92-93 season, the inaugural Prem season, got off to a slow start, but um, having signed Cantona for 1.2 million from Leeds, United's form really picked up. Man United became Premier League champions in its inaugural season and they won their first league title since the 60s and um, yeah although I said that the FA Cup win was when the floodgates opened it was the first league title which really set off the uh, huge huge success that United then had. After that season United went on to break all kinds of records and they retained the title the next season meaning that it was the first time they had retained the league since the 1950s. They also won the FA Cup that year meaning it was the club's first ever double. They did the double again and by the 98-99 season Man United were the dominant force in England and the team to be. They of course that season became the only English team to have won the treble. I know City have won and Liverpool have won certain trebles or quadruples or whatever but no one has ever won the Premier League, FA Cup and Champions League except for me on Football Manager numerous times but in real life it was done by Fergie here at United in 1999. They of course beat Bayern Munich in one of the most famous Champions League finals ever. I don't think Istanbul can be topped but um, it was still an amazing comeback to be 1-0 down with a couple of minutes to go and end up winning 2-1 is huge and uh, of course yeah it was Solskjaer the current Man United manager who scored the winner. The club then became the uh, first ever British winners of the Intercontinental Cup, the precursor to the Club World Cup. Fergie was knighted and then what came after that was a over decade long period of complete dominance. They beat Chelsea for another Champions League title, of course, in Moscow. They've had the Ronaldo and the Rooney era. They've had the class of 92. They've had all the great players like Van Nistelrooy and all the great legends of the Premier League they've had like Roy Keane. But I guess, um, I guess the biggest achievement was finally overtaking Liverpool in, uh, in having the most league titles out of any English club. And uh, yeah, Fergie, when he took over, I think, Man United were on six and Liverpool were on 18 but eventually yeah he would surpass that with an incredible run and yeah like I say he's got 13 league titles as a manager. Into the more modern era Man United have had four permanent managers since Fergie left that's David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho and of course now Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. A few trophies here and there have been won League Cups, Europa, League, Europa Leagues, Charity Shields that kind of stuff but it's nowhere near the kind of dominance that we've been used to seeing from Man United, certainly during my childhood. Ollie's yet to win a trophy at the club as manager, but he's certainly steering them in a more positive direction nowadays. They've got Champions League to come next year, as well as, um, yeah, they're currently, at the time of filming this, still in, uh, they're still yet to play the first leg of the Europa League semi-final. I think by the time this is uploaded, maybe the semis will have been played and they're already through to the final or out. But yeah, however you look at it, um, Ollie's done a good job in turning them around from kind of when he took over Everyone was kind of thinking it was a bit, you know, not the best um, appointment ever maybe as a permanent manager, but um, he certainly like answered a lot of his critics and has turned them around um, with the emergence of good players like uh, Bruno Fernandes and he certainly improved players like Luke Shaw and Mason Greenwood. But United fans, will it be as long between Busby and Fergie that you win another league title again? Obviously, what has it been now, seven, eight years since the last one? Will, um, will you win one again? in less than 26 years, which was, I think, the span between Busby and that amazing team of the 60s and Fergie in the early 90s. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if I've missed anything out about Man United, do let me know. The stadium tours open very soon in England. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to come back and have a proper look around because like I say, they're a little bit strict about filming and what you can and can't see, sadly. Please do remember to smash that like button and uh, yeah, drop me a comment if you're a United fan. Subscribe if you aren't already as well. And remember to check out FOCO, first link in the description box and the pinned comment so you can win this Man United stuff here as well as the face coverings that I've got as well. Please do also so remember to pass the vlog. I bet you lot know some Man United fans out there who'd enjoy seeing this video or maybe fans of other clubs that I have covered as well. Yeah, please do pass it on. Just let one person know that I exist. I'd really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave some videos around my head as ever so you can keep watching my content. Please do click on one before I leave you. That'd be great. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.